thought I'd take a few minutes tonight to talk about my uh, Risky Board 70. And I think I'm going to do another follow-up video with something else that I've been working on. So revision two is done. It's been done for a few days. It was actually mostly done like two months ago, but I went through and finished it up because I thought maybe uh, GLC PCB would actually have the chips I need. No, no, they don't. They only had like a couple for a brief time and I didn't make that window. <laughs> uh, it would have been a fortune anyway, because it's too expensive. So in case you're wondering what's going on with my Risky Board 70 prototype number two, this is it. I've replaced the USB hub chip I see with a new one that's better. Even the same company, it's just instead of the FE1.1S, I'm using the FE1.1. And that's what's going to go in this little IC1 socket here. And that's the big that's one of the biggest changes. But the second big change is that uh, these little Hall effect sensors, the 49Es, uh, are now using their own dedicated uh, uh, switching power supply over here, this, this LDO. Uh, CO says VA, that's to indicate analog. So all of the analog signals are on their own dedicated power line. And even the um, there's an analog input, like a voltage um, reference in the MCU here in the SCM32 F401. And it is tied into that so that it should have much, much more accurate signals than the current risky board, which wobbles all over the crease. <laughs> it wobbles like crazy. The uh, voltage can go up and down like 60 milliamps, which is way more than it should. And the reason for that is because all of these uh, Hall effect sensors are basically right next to the LEDs. Now LEDs can generate a lot of noise, but that's not what's going on. What's going on is the they're hooked uh, in the current version, they were hooked up to the uh, same exact power. So the power comes in, I think up here in the corner, actually I can verify that. So if we, let me turn off the uh, right here. Okay, so here's the power, 5VD. That's the uh, incoming dual uh, five, five volt incoming uh, power supply. And in the old version, this 5VD was shared with uh, pin one here on the um, Hall effect sensor. And what ended up happening is whenever the voltage on the LED, you know, increased, it would uh, wobble this, it would basically steal some voltage from this. And because I'm not putting down uh, a little capacitor in each single, for each single um, Hall effect sensor, this is what happens. It steals voltage and the voltage wobbles when I read the analog signal. So that should be fixed in the next version. I mean, hopefully we'll see, you know, in like a year when they actually get the, the chips in. <laughs> uh, and for reference, I'm using a STM32 F401 and the plan is to use the CEU6 version, which is the same as the black pill. But I can actually use a whole bunch of different chips here. Like I can use the 411s or the CEU6. I can also use the CCU6 or the CRU6 or the whole, any of the U6s, like C whatever U6. I can put it in here. So I'd search for any one of those. They don't have any, none of them. And the lead time is 45 freaking weeks right now for that baby. And not only that, they're out of the Hall effect sensors. Now I found an alternate that's the same footprint, but the data sheet's all in Mandarin. <laughs> so I don't know what the heck, uh, if it'll work, but I, I do have um, some of them that I've hand wired and they seem to work. Uh, so I might risk it and throw those on there if uh, GLC actually gives me some chip I can use. But uh, right now the prices on these chips is just insane. It's like 22 bucks or something per chip, which normally they're like $4 or two. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of what's going on with the global chip shortage, that's that's what's going on. Uh, some other improvements that I made that I might want to that you might be curious about is uh, up here the um, reset has been relocated next to the ST Link connector. Not that anybody really cares about that. I put a little bit more space between the USB ports. Uh, it's got a single reset switch that should let you enter DFU bootloader mode without having to have a separate boot uh, zero pin or or a jumper which is pretty sweet. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Like if you just hold it down for like a few seconds, it should go into DFU mode. That way you can flash the risky board firmware without needing uh, a special programmer. I also moved the rotary encoder over like, I think two millimeters to the right. So it'll hang off the board, uh, you know, the edge of the board just a little bit more than it did before. But more importantly, this gives me more room right here uh, for, for some other things that I might be developing. We'll see. And the idea with putting the reset switch all the way the heck over here is so that I can put like a little piece of plastic over the board that you can um, just push down, you know, something that'll snap fit right into the, um, into the top plate that, you know, not, not a, like, not like a magnetic switch or anything, just a, you know, basically a piece of plastic you can push down to uh, reset the board if you want to flash it. 
that's all that, that was that's like the big change there's also a uh, LED output port down on the bottom here <clears throat> and the I put a dedicated uh, spot for the uh, infrared receiver which is optional I'm not even gonna order it with the PCB I'm just, I've got some here I'll solder it in by hand for testing because it might need to be rotated uh, or whatnot but in theory you should be able to just bend this you know bend it out the side and as long as the top is exposed, anything coming at it from many different angles should work for your infrared remote controls. Um, let's see, what else have I made? <coughs> the um, power adapter's been moved over just a smidge. Not that that matters. I got rid of the extra USB-C uh, adapter for two reasons. One, the USB-C ports are kind of expensive. <laughs> And two, it was it, it's like confusing, you know. The end user, someone, so I had a conversation with someone, and they're like, "Well, the end user gets really confused if they have to uh, figure out which port, which USB port they need to plug into," and this solves that problem, you know, forever. Don't have to worry about it. Another benefit here is that I've got this Sense port uh, pin. So I don't know if you guys are aware that uh, barrel jacks like this have two have an extra pin here, right? And a lot of people think it's just structural, but it's not. The way it works is when nothing is plugged in, this is connected to ground, right? Um, but when you plug it in, it goes floating, right? So there's a switch inside of these barrel jack connectors so you can detect when the um, plug gets plugged in. So that's a really convenient way to me, for me to tell when there's external power connected. And there was no good way to do that with the um, USB-C port. I've also added a ton of little helpful things like this. Oh, and this is a new adapter too. This this uh, connector I added on here is for a Max 7219 display, like those little cheap $7 things you can buy on Amazon. If you've seen the images of my keyboard, that's the that's the display, that like red LED matrix. And they come in all different colors, you know, green, blue, red, and white. The white being like the mysterious white whale, hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> but they do exist. Um, and if you wanted to put one on your risky board, you can do that. There's a convenient connector that lines exactly, it lines up exactly with how those displays are sold. Um, and it will work with any length display. Uh, the biggest ones I've seen are like eight, eight, and that's what I've got hooked up to my risky board. But you don't need eight. You know, you could go with six. It'd be just as good. Uh, I've got the usual quick connector, which I'm going to try and get JC, GLC PCB to, to solder on there, but we'll see. Uh, there's an extra 3.3 volt connector here. All these pins have been changed around, all of them, uh, for good reason. Basically, I needed to reroute some stuff here um, in order to make things more convenient for the end user. And also, I've got a lot more traces for power. Look at this. All right, let me find one of these um, one of these traces here. 3.3. Uh, I'm looking for 3.3. Here we go. So I think I put C. No. Highlight net. It's B. No, that's. Fill all zones, crap. This takes forever. No, it's tilde. That's what it is. It's tilde. Oh, here we go. It's just so you know, this, every time I do this, it takes 19 seconds exactly. And hitting cancel doesn't do anything. All right, tilde. Let's look at this. Look at that. This is all the power that I ran for all those um, Hall Effect sensors. Yeah. <laughs> and this is ready to order. Whenever um, we get the new chips in, and, and you might be wondering, well, why don't you try some other place, other manufacturer other than JLC PCB? Well, the answer is that I did. I did look around, and they don't have the chips either. But more importantly, this PCB without any chips on it at JLC PCB is $22 for five of them. The next closest quote, I think, was Seed Studio, and it was like $112 just for the PCB. That doesn't include the assembly or the parts. So there's such a big price disparity there. It's just not worth it um, to do it anywhere else. So I'll just have to wait. Now, I don't mind soldering things by hand, but some of them I can't. Like I, These things are basically like dust, these little components on here. I, I can't do that by hand. And, I, and I'd have a hell of a time with the CPU. Um, I just don't trust myself to solder it, especially so close to um, uh, all these little uh, vias and whatnot. And I'll remind you to you all that I taught myself how to use KI CAD just a few months ago. <laughs> and I have not made that many boards since. All right, so that's the update on the um, on the uh, Risky Board 70. And I do believe I got the 3D viewer open here. Oh, it's tree drawing without the filled background. But that's what it looks like. Let's flip it around so you can see the back. I removed the logo right here just because it was a little... People were, were complaining that it was off kilter. 
and it was weird to be asymmetric. And I had this nice little summoned into this world for, <laughs> so you could sign your name there with a Sharpie. And that is all. Um, there's some other things too. I think I already covered them though, like in an earlier video, like the LED bypass feature. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, sorry, I got a little ranty on this video, but I wanted to give you guys an update and I don't have much time to edit tonight. So this is what you get.